NFL Daily by Chad Sports. Tyler Jones here. Thanks for joining us. Let's get right to it, beginning with Trey Lance. Could the San Francisco 49ers not only trade away Trey Lance, but send him to a team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? The folks at SI's Bucks Game Day have proposed an idea of sending the San Francisco 49ers quarterback to Tampa Bay. Now, there's a few things worth noting when it comes to these two organizations, the Buccaneers and the San Francisco 49ers. Let's show you. Right now, the Bucs are in a quarterback battle between Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. And so far throughout camp, neither quarterback has looked that great, according to reports. There's been a lot of turnovers from both quarterbacks. Now, we'll see how things go when it comes to preseason action. But so far, not so great for either QP. Meanwhile, Trey Lance back in San Francisco is competing for the QB2 spot with Sam Darnold. Brock Purdy has already been named the starter uh, with that San Francisco 49ers team. So Trey Lance, who the Niners at one point used three first-round picks to get, is hoping just to be the number two quarterback at this point. Shall he stay in San Francisco? Meanwhile, one thing that Trey Lance could have to offer, comparably speaking to what's there in Tampa Bay right now, is a dual threat ability that you don't see from Mayfield or Trask that they don't offer. Now, sure, you might see Baker Mayfield throw on the run here and there, but Trey Lance is uh, much more consistently capable of running and getting you 10, 15 yards per rush as opposed to what you're going to see from Mayfield or Trask as far as that goes. An update from SI's Bucks Game Day uh, on the idea of moving on, uh, of, of bringing in Trey Lance. Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask are currently the two quarterbacks battling for the starting quarterback position. Lance would fit right into the battle and could be a great cheap option for the team to try and build around. If the pairing doesn't work out, the team doesn't lose much at all. Here's the thing. If you are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, You could give up a day three pick and land a player in Trey Lance that has more upside, more potential than any other quarterback in your quarterback room. And, folks, don't get me wrong, I love Baker Mayfield. I'm a Baker Mayfield guy. But through the last few years, I think we all were pretty aware. There's only so much Baker Mayfield can do, right? Trey Lance, the sky is still the limit at this point. Granted, he's been very raw and very injured the last few years, but the upside is still there. The potential to be great is still there for Trey Lance. Don't know if we can say the same for Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask as far as that goes. The numbers for Trey Lance, the four games that he has started for the Niners included completion percentage around 55%, just a little less than 800 yards passing, five touchdowns and three interceptions, 235 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown. So, let's ask you now our pin comment today. Should the Bucs trade for Trey Lance? If you think they should, type Y for yes. If you think they shouldn't, type N for no. Weigh in. Tell us what you think in the comment section. Y for yes, N for no. If the Bucs should make a trade for Trey Lance or not. Today's show is presented by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet, you can get a 125% deposit bonus when you use the promo code NFL Daily. Put $100 down, get $125 to spend for free at chatsports.com slash bet. It's like buying a pizza and then getting an extra pizza and another slice for free. It's a great deal that we're offering just for NFL Daily viewers. And on top of that, folks, not only can you bet on NFL games, you can also bet on MLB action. You want to bet on some soccer uh, maybe you want to bet on some motorsports, whatever it may be. We've got plenty of options available for you. Right now, get your bets in today. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code NFL Daily for that 125% deposit bonus. Patrick Queen, could the Baltimore Ravens move on from their inside linebacker? The folks at the 33rd team are suggesting the Ravens could still trade Queen before the season. Now, let me set the scene for you here before we get into too much detail and show you about these trade ideas that the 33rd team has put together here. For months on end, the speculation has been rampant about Patrick Queen's future with the Baltimore Ravens. Remember, they declined 
his fifth-year option. They drafted Trenton Simpson, and they still haven't come to terms on a new agreement at this point in time. Now, we've heard Eric DaCosta, the general manager for the Baltimore Ravens, say, hey, we want to keep him. We believe in him long term. We think he's a Pro Bowl caliber linebacker. Uh, But as we once heard from uh, the great movie uh, that is, now it's escaping me. I can't even, uh, Jerry Maguire, yes. From Jerry Maguire, show me the money, right? There's no deal in place at this point in time. So with that said, where does that leave the Baltimore Ravens? Where do they go from here? Jeff Diamond, the 33rd team, had this to say. The Ravens paid big money to Roquan Smith declined Queen's fifth-year option, and drafted Trenton Simpson in the third round of this year's draft. Simpson is Queen's likely replacement, which could happen sooner than later. More on Patrick Queen, a former first-round pick out of LSU in 2020. And what do I say from time to time around here, folks? The best availability is availability, right? And with Patrick Queen, sure, he hasn't been to a Pro Bowl at this point in time, but... He started every game in his first three seasons. Every single one. Has not missed a game for the Baltimore Ravens. He was an all-rookie team selection in his first year. And if you shift over to the statistics for what he's done in his young NFL career at this point, this is a guy that is coming off the best season of his career so far. And think about this in 2022. Things started out a little slow for him. Then you pair him up with Roquan Smith, and we saw him flourish there with that Baltimore Ravens team. 2021, 2020, those were solid seasons. But last year, he took a huge step in the right direction when you paired him with Roquan Smith. Now, here's the other thing. When you talk about trade value, where he could potentially end up, Patrick Queen, you spent a first-round pick on him, but you're looking at maybe a day-two pick maybe a couple of day three picks. You're not going to get the return on investment of what it took to draft Patrick Queen. Nobody's giving you a first-round pick. Uh, So we'll show you the teams and the potential situations for Patrick Queen in just a moment. But first, should the Ravens trade Patrick Queen? What do you guys think? Type T for trade, P for pass. What do you think? Should the Ravens move on from Patrick Queen? I think you see a guy that... Has plenty of potential, right? We know he's a good player, but can he be great? Is that next step still ahead, or is he just is what he is? What do you think? Should the Ravens trade or not? Chime in the comment section. Tell us what you think. T for trade, P for pass. So here's the first idea that Jeff Diamond of the 33rd team put together. The Minnesota Vikings are on an interesting option. Queen would stay in a 3-4 defense and upgrade the Vikings linebacking core for last year's 31st-ranked defense. He's seven years younger and a better player than Jordan Hicks. Now, think about this as far as the Vikings go. The Vikings could barely pay Daniil Hunter, right? That was the thing about the holdup with Daniil Hunter was, well, we've paid all these other guys. Do we still have enough money for Daniil Hunter? We're all of a sudden you're going to get the money to pay uh, Patrick Queen, if that's the case. Um, You know, if you're the Vikings, I think Patrick Queen would be a good fit. He would be a a, a nice piece to have, but it's the same problem the Ravens have right now. It's, can you pay him long term? That's a big problem, I still think. The Vikings are a uh, weird trade partner in that sense because it's the same issue that Baltimore is going through. Another idea that was proposed by the 33rd team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, no Queen well from playing in the same division, and we would bring another playmaker to their 3-4 defense in that tough AFC North. Let, let me tell you this right now. In no universe, none whatsoever, would the Ravens ever trade Patrick Queen to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Are you kidding me? That ain't happening. Now, he could be a good fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Very well could be. He could thrive in Pittsburgh. But could you imagine how much of a disaster the repercussions there would be and the motivation and all that if you send Patrick Queen to your biggest rival like that? I would be very shocked, very shocked if Patrick Queen ended up in Pittsburgh. It'd be a good fit for Pittsburgh, no question about it. But I would be very surprised if 
Baltimore pulled that trigger to send him to their arch rival Pittsburgh Steelers. What team will Patrick Queen play for this season? Is it going to be Baltimore? Is it a team like Pittsburgh? Is it Minnesota? Is it somebody else out there? Weigh in, tell us in the comment section what team you think Patrick Queen is ultimately going to end up with. A couple more notes on a potential Patrick Queen trade. Listen to this. Did you know that if the Ravens were to trade Patrick Queen, it would have no effect on the Ravens' cap? None whatsoever. Um, and it would save them $2.3 million against the cap. So although the trade value is not great for Baltimore, looking at ah, maybe a day two pick, maybe a couple day three pick, um, cap-wise, you, you save a little bit of money. So maybe you go upgrade another position potentially, have a little extra cash to spend to sure up your roster. But the bottom line is this. All indications are that Trenton Simpson isn't ready for a starting role yet. If the Ravens were fully confident in Trenton Simpson, we talked about Trenton Simpson earlier, who they selected in the third round at Clemson then this would be an easy move to make. If you're the Baltimore Ravens, you say, yeah, let's, let's get what we can out of Patrick Queen, go with a younger player, we pay him less, and we move on call today. The reports that we've seen out of training camp are that Trent Simpson is coming along, but he's nowhere near ready for a full-time starting role, that he's very raw at this point in time. What I would do if I were the Baltimore Ravens, I would go ahead and keep Patrick Queen for now let him play the season out, and then figure out what to do next offseason, whether that be a uh, franchise tag and trade him or give him a new contract, whatever it may be. Let the season play out, roll with what you got, and then just kind of kick the can down the road and, and figure it out later when it comes to Patrick Queen. That's what I would do. That's some free advice for Eric Costa and John Harbaugh. We'll see what they do, but uh, that's what I would recommend at this point. One final note before we go, where will Ezekiel Elliott sign? That has been one of the biggest questions this offseason is where the former Cowboys all-pro running back will end up. According to a new report from The Athletic, Dallas, New England, and the Jets are the favorites. Listen to this. The Patriots have remained highly interested in Ezekiel Elliott, and the Cowboys are also in the mix to re-sign the 28-year-old, according to league sources. The New York Jets has, have also been in on Elliott. Now, we've seen Jerry work his magic in the past, and it feels like Dallas, I think, is going to find a way to still keep Zeke around one way or the other. That's Jerry's guy, right? He's been with him for a long time. Um, we know Tony Pollard is their running back going forward to be their bell cow, but if Zeke can understand that he could be a short yardage back and you know, be a guy that they call upon for those red zone opportunities. Um, if he understands that, Mike McCarthy is going to want to run the football. Obviously, you, you brought in Deuce Vaughn, but you can't really do that type of role like you would Zeke. It would be a good fit. And Zeke's not going to have to move or anything like that. He just stays right there in Dallas. I think that's what happens at the end of the day. It's a long road to get back to this point. But I do think that all is going to be forgiven and Zeke ends up back in Dallas. Where do you guys think Zeke? is going to play this year. Does he end up back with the Dallas Cowboys, or does he go to another team? Weigh in. Tell us what you think in the comment section where Ezekiel Elliott will ultimately end up. Talking more NFL on my social media channels, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, threads, and more at Tyler Jones Live. You can find me there, and I'll see you next time right here on NFL Daily.